welcome. Jack Welch, you are the chairman of Book of Mormon Central currently, but you also were heavily involved in FARMS, the Foundation for Ancient Research in Mormon Studies back in the day, and you were the editor of BYU Studies for many, many years. And so in some ways, you're an intellectual and professional heir to Hugh Nibley. Um, but to understand why we're doing this book, could you just give us a brief synopsis of who was Hugh Nibley and why would we do a book devoted to him? Who was Hugh Nibley? Many, many people that I ran into outside of Utah asked me that question. Uh, when I was at Duke going to law school, I slipped over to the uh, uh, religion department there. They have a school of theology there. And uh, I was using the library for various uh, research projects that I had. And so I had a lot of conversations with people and they would, some of them knew the name Nibley. During the 1950s and early 60s, Hugh was publishing up a storm in, uh, in academic journals. Uh, he was publishing in the top tier journals on ancient, uh, ancient history, early Christianity. And where did he come from? No one, he wasn't in the mainstream of, you know, Harvard, Yale, and Eastern schools. He'd been in California, but he'd graduated back in the 30s, and World War II had interrupted all of that, and then he just comes out of nowhere. He, he was so prolific and so striking in the way he approached problems. And uh, his footnotes, of course, were elaborate and extensive. Also, who was Hugh Nibley in terms of the church here in... Uh, uh, in Utah and church scholarship and BYU. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a lighthouse. Uh, he was a beacon for a whole generation of, of students who came to his classes no matter what he was teaching. And uh, one other you know, funny little story that'll just tell you a little bit about who he was. Uh, there were never empty seats in his classrooms. Students would line up outside the doors to, uh, you know, just to slip in and listen. And the honors program at BYU, you know, started uh, to give students a small classroom experience. And uh, so I was a little surprised at how big that <laughs> classroom was. It was in the old Joseph Smith building. I wasn't surprised, however, when the, the first midterm, our, our midterm exam came. And I walked into our room and looked around, and there were only four or five of us there. And I said, are we in the wrong room? <laughs> and the guy next to me said, no, we're the only ones stupid enough to be taking this for a grade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember walking up to, to Hugh after... Uh, uh, a lecturer asking if I could see his notes. I just wanted to get a few things. And he said, well, I'm sorry, the notes today are in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so all these are just to say, uh, he is not an ordinary doorman, uh, although he thought of himself as one of my pieces in this volume uh, will, will say, that he was a, a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. And that's how he preferred to describe himself. He talked about the temple in ways that nobody had ever even dreamed of thinking about. And so all of his stuff on uh, seeing connections with Egyptian temple worship and uh, uh, our LDS endowment and temple. Uh, so that's the kind of doorkeeper he was in the house of the Lord. Uh, he did not see himself as a gatekeeper. He wasn't trying to keep anyone out. Uh, and uh, in fact, he wanted everyone in. Uh, I didn't ask him the question, but I remember him being asked once, so when did you get your testimony of the Book of Mormon? Tell me how it happened. And he talked about coming up out of the water as he was driving that Jeep onto the beach with the machine guns firing at them and driving up and realizing the Book of Mormon is true. Wow. That's where he got his testimony. 
what can help us now? We're in that Jeep right now. And we're landing on battlefields. What will help us through our challenges? And I think having Nibley on our team and on our side, he doesn't have all the answers. But he usually has all the perspectives that will help us. And so I, I hope this book will serve that function in uh, being a collective memory by a lot of people. This is a big book, but I think it's, uh, it's successful because it lets each one of us speak and our experiences with Nibley, each of which were uh, quite personal, quite unique. Nibley had his fans, Nibley had his opponents. But he, uh, like he said, uh, we must engage in the debate or you lose by default. And uh, we don't want to do that. Beautifully put. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.